All right, so in the next part of the ongoing Transformers Prime big serialized mid-season finale style event thing, now that we've gotten the setup, the Nemesis, when it was still conscious as Trypticon, was able to decipher more ancient relic coordinates, it's time for our characters to split up and go try and find those. There's a bit of exposition at the beginning. It's actually pretty sloppy for this show, as far as exposition in the show goes, where Optimus explains why they need to split up, even though they have fewer people than the Decepticons, and it's because they can't let Megatron get any of these objects, and he does have more people, so he can afford to split up, so he's definitely going to do that. And of course he does, sending Knockout and a single Insecticon, who I think we were supposed to recognize was somebody important, like maybe they're a reference to somebody from the original series or something, but as far as I know, they're never named, so... As well as several Viacons to an underground location in Manhattan via the subway, because Megatron could use his weapons to carve his way down to the Relic, but there's no reason for him to draw that much attention to himself. He is shrewder than that. However, the Autobots aren't really used to navigating human cities, and they're far more likely to be seen in New York than anywhere else, especially if they have to go robot mode. So once RC and Bumblebee are assigned to go on this specific mission, they decide they need to take some humans with them, and Fowler is still incapacitated from his time on the Nemesis. So that leaves the kits. So they end up taking Jack and Miko, and thankfully Miko has knowledge of big cities. She's able to find an entry into the subway pretty easy for them by looking for construction of one of the subway tunnels. But once they're down there, the two kids end up getting separated from the Autobots when they bump into a human named Vogel. He's, I guess, a subway maintenance guy. I don't think they ever actually tell us exactly what he does, though. And they actually bump into him a couple times as they try to get away a couple times so they can reunite with the Autobots because they have to pretend like they're lost down there, and of course he insists on helping them. And they try various lies to get him to just let them be, but at the end of the day, he's both a well-meaning guy and also a conspiracy theorist who already believes in aliens, so they just tell him the truth, and he ends up helping out. Twice, he's actually part of the reason that Knockout is driven off when the heroes need him driven off. And our heroes do end off the episode with the Relic, which is a phase shifter, that a Transformer can wear on his wrist to allow him to shift through objects. And at the end, in order to keep Vogel quiet, they end up uh, calling Fowler, who I guess is not incapacitated anymore and is alone back at base for some reason, which is definitely a teaser for the next episode, and it's a pretty effective teaser at that, so good on the writers. And Fowler deputizes Vogel as an agent for the U.S. government and asks him to keep quiet, and now he's going to keep quiet. It's very cool. I like Vogel a lot as a character. I don't recall whether or not we see him again in the show, but he's definitely fun for at least this one appearance, and so I'm glad he's here. It's also worth noting that the idea to get Fowler involved at the end in order to keep Vogel quiet about the Transformers was Miko's idea. In fact, a lot of the best ideas in this episode are Miko's ideas. She's the one who's able to find the subway, as I mentioned before, or at least an entry into the subway that the Transformers can use to get down there. Obviously, subway entrances aren't hard to find in New York. But she has other good ideas throughout the episode, proving that she's not dead weight anymore, that she does know how to take a situation seriously. And, like, she also did that in the previous episode while they were on the Nemesis. So clearly that's a thing she can do, but drawing attention to that, and they do draw attention to it specifically in the episode, I think was a really good thing for her character, as it's very easy to overlook when she takes the situation seriously, is we're very used to her being the reckless one. And it's not as if she's entirely not reckless anymore or anything. She's still the same person. It's just she understands the weight of the situation better and is able to make herself legitimately useful in situations like these now when she wasn't really before. And that's something that she calls Jack out about in the episode. Specifically, he's still going on and on about the fact that he was chosen to go to Cybertron because he's the responsible one. And so while his instinct is to take charge in stuff regarding himself and Miko all throughout the episode, he does eventually start deferring to her. He gives her a chance 
and then she's able to prove herself over the course of the episode. I do have a couple of issues with the episode, though. I mentioned the clunky exposition at the beginning. The Autobots and the Decepticons are both guilty of this. Megatron specifically puts an Insecticon with Knockout because he doesn't have Breakdown anymore to act as his muscle, and that's just the way that Knockout is used to fighting, is with himself as the mobile one and then somebody who's big and powerful backing him up. And it makes sense, but it didn't need explained to us as overtly as it was. And Optimus and Megatron both use the word race, very sloppily telegraphing that eventually Bumblebee and Knockout are going to have to race uh, to try and, and get the relic from one another or to get to the relic first. One or the other ends up being the former of the two. And like, they're both going on the mission. Bumblebee can transform into a car again, and both of them are speed demon types, so obviously they're going to race. You didn't need to tell us, it felt goofy. Also, I guess assigning that one individual Insecticon to, to knock out as his new, I don't know, bromance partner, secondary character, I don't even know what you'd call him. They use the term support, so let's say supporting character. I guess that's equivalent to giving him like a named role in the show, elevating him to a main character, because he's shrugging off blaster fire left and right, whereas just a couple episodes ago, characters like Bumblebee were blasting Insecticons out of the air like it was nothing. And it just, it comes off as silly, and I think is detrimental to the visual continuity of the show overall, if that makes sense. Though I did speculate back during that episode that because some, if not all, of those Insecticons had been born prematurely, possibly, that they might be a little weak. Maybe that was the case and this is just one of the fully mature ones or something. I don't know, it just, it felt strange to me. And the way they beat him, like, I get it. I get that that's a thing that might harm him, but I don't think it would actually take him completely out of the fight if Blaster Fire wasn't... If you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. It has to do with the, th the subway system third rail. RC is able to get him to expose himself to it, and it just knocks him clean out, and I just don't buy that that would be the case. Still, this is a solid episode that has that brief little cutaway to Fowler, which connects it to the next episode, making it clear that other events are happening right now at the same time as these events, helping it feel like more a part of the big overall mid-season event that's going on, whereas otherwise it would feel like just another mundane MacGuffin of the Week style episode. It's not the best that the series has to offer, but it's certainly far from the worst. All of that said though, guys, what did you think of the Transformers Prime episode Tunnel Vision? If you have seen it, let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.